Let's push this down. So last time we were talking about how to draw utilities and kind of got into the generic part of it. So basically I'm gonna go, I'm not gonna go through everything. We're gonna really get into AutoCAD and how to do pipe networks this time. So this is what we talked about before, you know, the difference between wet and dry utilities. Um, you know, the types of information you can use. And then the four levels, I just wanted to remind everybody about the four levels. So essentially A is pothole information. Uh, B is um, like geophysical or, you know, uh, uh, radar. Is this like level A through D, like, is it a standard? Yes. Like, do we have- ASCE 3802. How come we don't, like have level A, B, C, D, all other stuff. Um, like, would we ever want to do that or think about doing that? We have done that to a certain extent, um, at least in the electrical side. We have, you know, assumed, right. you know, which is level D um, and or level C, and then potholes, which is level A. Now, the we kind of skip over level B because if we're going to actually, you know, find the elevation, we actually go and pothole the, the, the utility in question, rather than just use a geophysical method. And basically, geophysical method, for those of you that don't know, uh, is uh, basically a surface machine that will, once you put tone on the um, utility, and by tone I mean there's a sending unit that has a tracer wire, you can send information down the tracer wire, or you actually attach the device to the um, steel main or whatever it is. Um, then it sends tone down the line and there's a, a geophysical machine that can actually read that tone and tell how deep it is. They're good sometimes within a tenth or two um, depending on if the device is calibrated or not. But usually what we do is we actually go and have it dug up with a vacuum uh, apparatus where they actually dig down to the, you know, open up a hole about this big and dig down to it. And that's what we're calling pothole of information. And then somebody comes back and surveys it later. So that's actually level A. Okay, so I just wanted to remind everybody about that. And then, you know, where to start, you'd start looking at the checklist. Does everybody remember the checklist that I had from the last time? Okay, I've actually put that on screen. I've actually put that in um, a particular place on the G drive. So if everybody goes to the G drive and it goes to QAQC, did I, go, did I put it there or did I put it, there it is. So here are the two checklists. So there's the checklist for distribution, tech checklist for transmission. But what's nice about them is they're not just for, um, electrical jobs. There's a lot of information here that apply to all the jobs. Um, one of the things that I'm tasked with is maybe making this more generic for say sewer jobs or water jobs or uh, you know a, a roadway uh, improvement job. So the, that's where these will reside. So again, G drive, transmission, uh, underground in the QAQC folder. So that's where they'll go. Uh, so if you need that checklist, that's where you go to get it. Um, one of the things it, we'd like to do here is uh, how many actually use uh, this to start AutoCAD? Raise a hand. Nice. Um, 
The nice thing about it is it actually, when you're uh, using Civil 3D, it actually sets your Civil 3D folder so that um, you can actually see that it's not set to the correct thing and then actually set it to those that correct, you know, um, come on, Mark, think, uh, set it to the correct uh, setting. So, you know, if it's actually set to a particular thing and you want it set to CAD classes, utilities, okay, then you can actually change all that here, and then the next time you open that file, it'll be set correctly. Okay? So that's how you use this. Um, the other thing is every once in a while, this uh, program will dump everything back to zero. Okay? So it's a good idea to back up your job list. Um, yeah, hush. So it's a good idea if you have an extensive job list to back it up. And so the way you do that is you actually write uh, write these out. You can write them out to a file. So write them out to your G drive. And that's where I put all of mine. And so the next time it zeroes out, all you have to do is import. So this button here, the green button is for import. Uh, little magenta buttons for uh, that way you don't have to load all your stuff from scratch so that's a nice way of doing that um, in addition we have uh, all these programs we'll be adding in civil 3 d uh, 16 uh, a setting here for raster design and for those of you that know how to use raster uh, it's good for setting photos that have a world file. Um, so that's one use of it. The other use is tracing contours off of a, uh, a base map. Okay. So using this to start your CAD session. So now you have that roster in 16. Is that already going to be loaded? They want to show that profile? Um, not yet. I don't have it done. But I'm going to have it done here shortly, and the next time you reboot uh, or start your machine again, it'll load up automatically when I have it done. I'll send out an email, and that way you'll know to shut your machine down or restart the machine. Okay. Um, so that's you know, if you want to create a file, all your templates are here. So that's another nice thing about this. You can actually create the file using the template. Uh, so that's nice. And then uh, you actually have to give it a name. It's going into the folder that you have set at the moment. So this is highlighted. That's the folder it will go into. OK? So we were talking about this intersection the last time. and. One of the things that I've done in the meantime is actually created an alignment, um, several alignments for the center line of the street. I did that only insofar as to have something to a profile to show you how these um, crossings come up when you do uh, uh, an actual pipe network. So, you know, how do you get started drawing a pipe network? So. You can create one, okay? But if you start with the template, there's already pipe networks in the drawing already. So if you go to modify, pipe network, edit pipe network, you can see all the networks that are already in the drawing and already created for you and already have the correct part list associated with them, okay? So you don't have to reassign it. It's already there, okay? So if I were going to be drawing uh, st storm drain, let's say, I select storm drain, and 
now it already has um, a setting in here set for that. It already has all the storm drain because the parts list is set to existing storm drain already. Okay? So anytime you change, yes, yes, I know. Anytime you change uh, uh, to a different um, pipe network, you have to reassign the uh, surface. So I've got a surface assigned to this right here, but if I were to pick, I already been drawing in this. I already drew a particular um, uh, pipe structure. So I'll say okay, but if I were to say, choose another pipe network, okay? So let's say that I close out of this and I wanna edit, say, sewer, okay? Which is down below here. Uh, actually, it's in there. So if I pick sewer, parts list is changed to sewer. It'll get mad at me if I jump ahead. But this is set back to zero. So anytime you change your uh, pipe network to edit it, okay, you're going to have to reassign the surface. Now, you ask me, why do I need to reassign the surface? Well, there are a lot of rules in place for drawing. And so if you want to use the automatic rules for, say, you're drawing something, you're just assuming a, a normal depth, if you have the surface on, it'll draw it at that correct normal depth based on the rule, okay? Or if you have the surface in your drawing as a reference, when you pick an elevation, it picks up the elevation of the surface, okay? So if, in fact, this is set, if it's not set, then it just picks up zero and all the pipes end up at zero. And then you end up having to move them up in order to actually use them, okay? So um, let's say for the sake of argument, um, I'm gonna draw a sewer now. Let's uh, go ahead and draw this one from here to say here. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and just draw the sewer pipe. I'm not going to draw the structure. So let's go ahead and pick out the correct uh, sewer size. So 12 inch, I believe. And so I'm going to go ahead and pick. You can draw pipes and structures. Okay, you can draw a pipe only or you could draw just the structure only. Now, the structure that it puts in will be this structure. The pipe that it puts in will be this pipe. So you can have a null structure or you can have an, an actual, you know, 60 inch storm, you know, regular sewer manhole. And it'll actually put the block in there for you, okay? So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and put in, come on. Okay. So it's drawn the structure and now I'm drawing the sewer pipe up to here. So I can insert the next, you see that little orange uh, cursor, you know, next to the crosshairs there? 
that means I'm picking the pipe end. Okay? If that isn't on, then you're not actually attaching the structure to the pipe you just drew. Okay? So make sure that it's on. So, or you can make sure it's off if you don't want to attach it. You can attach it later or you can attach it to a different structure. Okay? But that's how you know that you've got the structure there. And then um, you can then draw to another structure or to another, um, uh, just to another place if you want. So when you do the pipe and structures, if you draw, you first draw the structure and then the pipe, and then on your end point, does it draw another structure? So did you just draw two structures? Right, or? but again, the is based on settings. And right now I have these all set for crossing. Okay. Okay. And because I have them set for crossing, it doesn't show the plan structures. Okay. So now I'm done drawing those structures. Okay. So one of the things you can do is then, you know, draw different structures or make sure these Actually, it drew the structure in. It's just I had structures in underneath it. Okay. So uh, the here's you know the active line in there. Now it won't actually draw. Uh, let's see if it actually is going to make a liar out of me. So if you right click on the part. Okay, you can get to pipe properties, network, pipe style. If you bring up pipe properties, it's a PVC and it's assumed depth. But let's change that to a pothole depth. We know because it's surveyed. And you can pick up the elevations. It picked up the elevations of 35, 95 as the actual elevation of that first starting point. In other words, it picked up the elevation of the surface. It didn't apply a, a rule to it. Um, so there must not be a rule set here unless these six cover, six foot cover. Maybe it did do it. I'm just not realizing it. So here's, it's basically drawn it flat, but so you can actually see that it's drawn it to that. But if you actually want to see where that is, let's go ahead and take a look at, and I have a couple of views saved already. My machine's a little faster than the average bear. Okay, so I actually have a, a profile set here. And so the sewer line is off the center line. But if I wanted to uh, actually show that, what I have is I have this center line drawn to the left. And I have this center line drawn to the right. So that's how I, I've got this profile set here. Um, you'll see that it's actually in this profile. So if I have something already pushed to the profile, all I have to do is turn the others on. If I don't have something, what I can do is I can highlight this this will automatically come up, and I can say, uh, draw parts in view. Now, what that means is it means draw the pipe network parts in the view. So if I pick a particular part, okay, it draws that in the view. So if I do that, I'm going to say pick the part select the network or selected parts only. So I'm going to say selected parts only. And so select pipe network parts that you want to show in that view. So I want to pick that one. Now you want to pick the profile view. 
that you want to add it to. Come on. Where'd it go? Come on, don't make a liar out of me. There it is. So there's the sewer. Um, so if I change that, you can see that it changes um, from, uh, you know, something that's solid to something that's existing. So I changed this one to a, a proposed, so you could see the difference. But that's the sewer. And then to get at it a different way, if you want, if once you've inserted one part into the uh, profile, you don't have to do it that way. You can go here and just select this and then select any of the parts and then you can actually override the style here if you want to. So if for the sake of argument you wanted to show the sewer okay, in profile view, then you could actually edit the part. Um, you can say, you can check this and say override the style and then check this part, okay, and show that pipe actually in the profile, okay? So all you have to do is basically turn it on, right? So once you've rejected one, you can see that all of them show up that I have drawn. If I continue to draw more, they will show up here, okay? Because they're existing within the drawing, okay? So this picks up the fact that there's actually pipe networks within it. If you create something new, you might have to project it once into the profile, okay? But because these are existing within the drawing, okay, already as networks, any time you create a profile view, they come automatically, okay? Does it have to be in the drawing or just referenced in? It can be referenced in, and that was one of the points I was going to make next, but these drawings get rather heavy if you keep the pipe network in the drawing you reference into your sheet file, okay? So in other words, these pipe networks get big, okay, and make your drawing big, and will take time to load, okay? So one of the key things is after you've created uh, these pipe networks, okay, is to save the drawing and then go to manage. Okay, because these are already created and you have the pipe networks here, I can check all of them, and hit OK, then all of them could just became a shortcut. Okay? I can go to any drawing that has these, reference them in, and then display them on a profile view for any profile view. Okay? As long as that pipe is drawn across that alignment. Okay? Now, if it's not drawn across that alignment, you can project it to the alignment, and you just have to change the style from crossing to, you know, the design style, okay, or the existing length style, you know, plan and profile, and turn it on. <clears throat> so uh, one of the things that you can see, at least from the fact that this is drawn here, but the actual elevation say it's at 24 so it's actually down here so if we were to edit that and push this down to 24 then it would go down to that um, you can actually edit those if in fact you draw an alignment now I'm not recommending that you draw an alignment you don't have to draw an alignment 
but if you wanted to see the pipe and true length and be able to edit its pieces in a profile view because it's easier for you to deal with it that way, then you can create a, a, an alignment automatically by just right clicking on the entity itself and it'll create from that network alignments. So um, you can go to pipe network properties and edit the network. And where is it? Okay. You can actually create Yeah, it is. So under alignment, what you can do is you can actually create it from a pressure network or from your network parts. Okay. So if you create an alignment, create a surface profile, okay, along that alignment, then you could then edit the pipes and structures, okay. It's easier for you to look at it in that profile view. Okay. But if you can look at it in the plan view, you can do the same thing. You just edit the elevation. Okay. So it's up to you and how you want to work. But um, creating that alignment, basically, you can select the parts you want to have on the alignment, or you can let use all of it. And it'll create an alignment, if it can, across all of it. All right. So if you have separate parts, you're going to have to have separate alignments, obviously. Okay. Um, one of the things that helps when you're drawing um, uh, concentric utilities, and let's say for the sake of argument, uh, I wanted to put in uh, a storm drain or the sewer but I know that it's concentric to the, to the center line. If I have the center line, what I can do is just offset the center line and create an offset alignment that I could draw the parts to, okay? And just use it as a tool by which I can then draw this concentric alignment, this concentric alignment, that concentric alignment, okay? And the way to do that is just creating an offset alignment. And create offset alignment. It's going to ask you for the actual alignment. <coughs> Come on. Or you can pick it from a list. Okay. It's La Media. I'm going to say the alignment style is just um, I'm just going to use this and then I'm going to say no labels because all I want is basically an alignment that I can draw to so I'm going to draw one on the left side one on the right side I can draw it at 10 feet or I can draw it whatever is convenient okay because you're going to move it back and forth based on what your needs are okay so now I've got alignments in here Okay, it looks like I got a discontinuity in my alignment, but oh well. Um, so when you look at this alignment, all right, come on. Oh, good. Pan. Pan doesn't work on this one. Um, Got to do it the old-fashioned way. Um, so when you go to the alignment, you have to go to like the middle of the curve or the middle of the alignment to actually see where it is. So if you highlight it, 
there is usually an arrow, there it is. So at the middle of the alignment is an arrow that you can actually change its offset, okay? So if you change that offset to say 27, okay? Okay, there's the offset at 27, okay? So if I were to draw that, you know, and say, that's the offset. Well, I missed the mark by about a few feet. So let's say, we go back to that. Annoying as I'll get out. Go to 33. <clears throat> that's almost there. You get the idea by calling out the alignment, you can then have something to draw to. You can change this alignment anytime you want. And for the sake of argument, if you were to change this one, okay, you could then change this. You can drag it along any point in the alignment and actually change its offset, but you have to go perpendicular to it. Well, maybe it's not gonna do it, because these have elevation. Never mind. So let's uh, go off of what we think it is, um, which I think is about six feet. That's six feet, and uh, it's probably 10 feet. Anyways, you can change those um, that way, or you can actually go to your offset parameters, and it brings up, based on your alignment, okay, it brings up your offset, and so you can change it that way. Um, one of the things I do is I'll actually like to have this anchored left, and I can just open it up when I need it, okay? That way I can change the offset. If I need to put in a widening, I can put in the widening and have it an alignment that I can actually draw to snap to the endpoints and be able to draw it more accurately, okay? So this is a, a tool, a trick, if you want, uh, to help you draw the utilities, especially along a concentric arc, or you know, it, it automatically gives you the, uh, BCs and ECs, okay? So you automatically draw to the EC and BC of the, the center line of the street so it matches, okay? You're not having to guess where that point is. Um, especially if, you know, the note on the drawing that you're looking at says, you know, concentric center line, and you're going, oh, okay, great. So I have to calc that. Um, no, you don't. You can have the machine do it for you, okay? So, Again, each of these you can then use to draw, and I did it last night, and I thought it was 33, but maybe it's not. Maybe it's 34 and a half. Okay, so if I select this one, go up here, so 34, you can see it actually moves, you know, as you hit enter, boom, it moves. So then I can draw this storm drain from this point on out, okay? So I can use that point, set draw a curve, pick the second point on the curve, pick the end point on the curve, and be able to draw that more accurately, you know? And you're saying, well, if I pick this, it'll be at zero. Yes, it will. Um, so what you do is, does everybody know what XY is, point XY, okay? It's essentially a way of entering a three-dimensional point. You pick the X and Y off the screen and you give it the Z, okay? So if you're going to be drawing a particular object, 
And let's say for the sake of argument, we're going to go back to storm drain. So go back to modify pipe network. Edit pipe network. Go back to storm drain. Okay, we're going to say we're going to draw 96, no, 84. 84 inch. I thought it was 84, maybe I'm wrong. No, 96. So I'm going to draw 96. So it's a big pipe. Okay. And I'm going to draw pipes only. And I'm going to draw from here. Now, I run with my OSNAP so on. Uh, have them set to a, a general setting. I usually have midpoint, endpoint, uh, center, and uh, apparent intersection. Okay. You know, if you don't have one of those, you can hit shift key and, and pick the one that you need. Okay. Um, but if I enter point X, Y, okay, now I can pick the X, Y of that. Now it says I need a Z. Okay. But let's say I want to give it a Z of, uh, Let's go 126 or 426. Okay. And now I'm drawing pipe, and I can say uh, curve, C, curve. And uh, I can give it a second point on the curve. So. That's really strange. Oh, I know why. So I'm on that layer. There's the panel. Weird spot, so we'll pick the rest. And why it did that, I have no idea. Huh? It set a structure. Anyways. One of the nice things about having this here is I can just grip at it. So if it messes up, you can just grip at it and get it there. So if I wanted to draw this pipe, okay, since I picked those points, you know, it might come up and draw the pipe zero. So I wanted to show how this would be displayed. So if I pick these points and say, um, uh, draw parts in view, and it says to pick the view, OK. Nothing showed up, OK? The reason being is the parts, if you will, don't cross this profile. They're longitudinal to it. So if I pick the profile view properties, if I look at pipe networks, they're here, okay? But um, 
they're not shown because I need to override the style and put it as <clears throat> not a crossing, but a profiled. So I'm going to go existing storm drain profile. Say OK. And now it's overridden, and it's overridden with that profiled. So now it's drawn that pipe, OK? You can see that this isn't drawn because what happened, I think, it didn't take to either that or it's down at 0. Let's see. No, it's at the right elevation because of the style. You say best laid plans, guys. Um, so pipe view properties. Again, it still says pothole assumed depth. Okay, so what I need to do is change this. I think then it would come up. Hello. <coughs> Why is it not showing up? Oh, it is showing up. Never mind. <laughs> um, duh. So one of the things I wanted to show you was that you can just pick a particular point. Let's say it's the invert. Move it down. Move it at a particular <coughs> If I pick both of them and pick this to go to there, OK? then both of them go, all right? So if you wanted to edit this in this way, you can, okay? So, or you can edit them in, in the plan view here, okay? So the nice thing about it is it gives you um, a way to show you how to edit those things and if it, you pick it by some point, you pick a, a zero, okay? You'll see it because this, uh, this pipe here, if I edit the pipe properties and artificially just push one elevation to zero, this is what it looks like. Okay, so that pipe being at zero, okay, I can recognize that, click on it, edit that pipe network or pipe property, see that it's set to zero, and just set it to this elevation or something close to it. Or let's say I hold the end elevation, okay, so I hold the end elevation, I just want to enter a, a negative 5%. There we go. Okay, so that's how you use these properties. Okay, so you once you get them drawn, you can use them any way you want. But the nice thing about it is, if I were to draw a uh, a pipeline over here and draw it this way, then you know, say it's connected to this. Okay, then I could get um, and I were to draw an alignment here and say display that pipe, let's say it's an 18 inch, it's coming from this, um, it's coming from this inlet, 
Okay, you're going, oh, okay, how do I get the inlet in there in the plan view? Well, the easiest way is to actually go over to your side. Um, come on, there we go. So I have this set to uh, profile information, but if I wanted to go to plan and help me out because I my eyes are bad, where is it? Oh, there it is. Um, this is a dynamic uh, B, okay? All I gotta do is drag that out and place it here, okay? So if I were to place it, say, there, okay? And then rotate it. Okay, and drag this out. There's my inlet. <clears throat> okay, so the nice thing about that is then I can actually draw from this point here, which is the midpoint of that first wall, okay, and draw the pipe from this inlet. to this pipe, because it was connected with the concrete lug, okay? So if I pick here and actually connect this by setting a structure and, you know, just a null structure and just set it, then I can connect it. And if I do that, then I can display it up here as a crossing, just project it, okay? So those are the types of things that you can do, but, you know, someone says, oh, okay, well, it's only got storm drain. Um, one of the nice things in here is um, you can go and change this to electric, to gas, and also to transmission, okay? So, and there's also civil, civil metric. Um, so in the civil is the uh, actual SD and, and sewer, um, tech, you know, uh, Pallets, uh, tool, tool pallet. Um, so these are, you know, say for gas, these are your gas items that you need for drawing gas lines. Okay. Um, again, you can, you have to get over that in order to get to this um, and then change it back to silver or change it to, you know, to. Um, these are actual uh, items you need for mapping for the transmission. And come on. You actually have to be on the right thing. So let's go here. Let's put it back here. So now I have uh, the electric, and if I bring it up, Here's your transection. Here's uh, your different proposed vaults, proposed profile. Of course, you also have to stay on top of it. Um, then here's distribution. So, you know, 33, uh, 13 is all the way up to a 27 in plan view. You also have the profile views. Okay, so um, these are all existing, okay? So there's really no excuse for not drawing the structure because they're all here, okay? So draw the substructures, uh, draw it to the you know, correct type and uh, length, and then draw the pipes in, okay? What you're gonna find is that if you're drawing the pipes in, not necessary to really have the structures unless you're going underneath one of them. Um, but let's say you, you're going across the street or you're going um, kind of crooked across the street, okay, going at an angle. One of the nice things about having these as a um, 
a crossing, when you cut the alignment across that at an angle, it actually lengthens out the item for you based on the geometry that you're crossing. Okay? So it'll actually lengthen out the, the arc of the pipe. It'll actually lengthen out the square for the uh, box culvert. Okay? So those are, you know, the tools. Um, I showed you how to get from, you know, uh, you know, get to the different tool layers. Here's also um, something that's nice. Uh, these are set, and watch, it's on the other screen. Oh, unknown command. Nice. Anyways, these, if I wasn't remoting in, it would work. It worked last night. Um, essentially, these are the underground standards. These are the um, regional standards. And so it brings up the website, okay, that shows you where those standards are. So here's all the standards in a PDF form for you to, to use and look at, okay? So these buttons here are essentially coming from um, the different end tools, uh, no, user tools, okay? So the user tools, I think it's uh, standards, okay? If you turn those on, all those buttons come in, okay? Uh, you know, creating lines, if I wanted to use the create lines or the modify. Um, so the, this one is a list routine. You can create a rectangle by three points, okay? And it's a button, so it's kind of nice if you ever need that. Um, but those are just user toolbars. These are express toolbars, civil toolbars, and then any AutoCAD toolbar that you just like to have up because it's easier for you to use the icon than it is to find it in the ribbon, okay? You can turn these on. I like having layer and layer two because I don't like having to change the ribbon to go find the, back to home to find the, the layer command, okay? So those are, you know, how you bring up the different uh, uh, tools. And then in here, you can actually show different panels, show the different tabs, okay? If you don't want to see survey ever again, you can turn it off. It disappears, okay? Because let's say you trip across it every time you're trying to pick the one that's next to survey, which I believe is output. And you're trying to make the plot file, but every time you go there, you miss it, and you hit survey. Okay, you can turn it off. Okay, so these are just some of the tools. Any question? Did I go over it too fast? It's all blur. Yes, no. I'm seeing a lot of blank stares. What do you use this for, like, in terms of, I mean, I guess the best. What I can think of it is like when we're doing like for instance TL six hundred and six and six hundred when you're projecting like the manholes. Right. It's if you're projecting the manholes, you can put that in there. Um, the other thing that you can do is if you're working in a, a city street, okay, and you want to draw cross sections, these will show up in the cross sections. So pipe networks can be turned on for uh, sections. They can be turned on for profiles, okay, and if you get really tricky, you can tilt this thing up and look at it in three dimensions, and it will show up in the model, okay? So, yeah, yeah. If you're drawing it on the same alignment, it's gonna take the surface uh, from the alignment, right? Correct, it's so taking the, whatever alignment you're using to display it, it's taking the surface from that alignment, okay, and at that alignment point, all right? Now, if I were, say, drawing something as, as an offset and projecting it to that alignment, what you see is the shortened 
view of it. You see the projected view of it. So let's say I have a center line, but the center line's arced, and I'm drawing on the outside of the arc. The actual pipe is longer, but when it's projected to the center line, it's shown shorter. Okay? And then this one, conversely, down here, when you're on the inside uh, part of the radius, when you draw this pipe, and it's projected to that center line, it's actually longer. Okay? So that's why I said draw your offsets. Then, you can then from that, once the pipe is drawn correctly, you could then create an alignment. And then if you did a surface profile for that alignment, then it would show the surface at that pipe. OK? Any other questions? Dazed and confused? Anyways, um, if you wanted to um, go over this or you forget um, in, in a week's time and you want me to come over and show you, not a problem. Okay? So with that, I'm going to end this.